Yet more news on black holes and potentially more evidence to suggest that they are something very different from what the mainstream believe that they are. And we also have a story about something which has been blasting holes into our own Milky Way. But let's start with a black hole. This time, it is a dwarf galaxy 3XMMJ150052, really catchy name, which is about a hundred times smaller than our own Milky Way. And this time, this black hole has been feeding on a star for over 10 years. Now, J150052 is what they term as a starburst galaxy. And this means that it is in an active star formation phase of its life cycle. And we will come back to that fact in a little while. Now, this galaxy was first noticed back in July 2005 uh, when it was detected to have a very high source of radio emissions coming from it. However, three months earlier, there were no detectable X-rays coming from it. And for the next 11 years, it continued to blast out X-rays. Now, in mainstream science, these types of events can be caused by such things as supernova events, but they tend to be very short-lived. They can also be caused by, obviously, black holes feeding on nearby stars. And then the idea is the accretion disk uh, heats up and this generates the X-rays. But even this does not really explain this event, as normally these events, so black holes feeding on stars, only last for a couple of years at best. And they believe, in order to explain this, that it must be caused by a supergiant star providing enough material to last this long. Now, if however we take a step back and extrapolate some further ideas based on what we have covered in previous episodes. So the first thing to note is this is a dwarf galaxy. And from ARP's model, we know that these could be formed through the ejection of quasars from active galactic nuclei. And as they move further away, they would form into a dwarf galaxy. And these would therefore still be highly energetic. And the second point is the galaxy is undergoing rapid star formation. And this again fits with Art's model. We also know that if this galaxy forming had an increased Birkeland current from the parent galaxy, it may cause the seeding process for the stars themselves. And now taking the first two points, it must be obvious that this incoming Birkeland current would cause an increased energetic effect in the center of the galaxy. Incoming plasma from the parent galaxy Birkeland current would feed into the center of the galaxy. This is a young galaxy, so would potentially have a higher rotation, causing a stronger magnetic field, and this would create a large EMF in the core. And together, these could cause an energetic plasmoid to form in the center, which could continuously emit X-rays. Now, on Monday, I'm releasing a video which will explain Alvin's galactic circuit model, which will hopefully help you to understand the last point a little better. Now, I'm convinced that this is once again evidence that these are not black holes, but instead electric or plasma events that are a normal part of a functioning galaxy and part of that life cycle of, of these galaxies. Now, finally, another story that caught my eye this week, and this one is about objects which are almost like bullets uh, punching through parts of the Milky Way. Using data from the Gaia Observatory, Anna Banaka noticed that there was a disruption to the longest stellar stream called the GD1 in our own galaxy. Now these are regions where stars all move in the same direction and are grouped closely together. Now, something has punched holes through this, leaving visible gaps. Now obviously, they will employ the mythical dark matter as the culprit, as they are unable to find any star located at the trajectory of these gaps, which they could blame. And to me, neither of these scenarios really fit. When I look at the image, I don't actually see stars. I see dots. And I, and I know what you're thinking, these are dots on the image, but just, just bear with me. So when I look at it, I, I, I see dots, which are rippling across the surface, creating a wave pattern. 
Now we've seen this behavior in plasma before, so is it so crazy to think that this would happen with stars? For a minute, just, just imagine that all the stars have positive charge and they are all moving together. And at the same time, there is a galactic current sheet which would ripple through them or across them. Would this not create a similar pattern just as ions do in plasma? And I will leave you with that note to ponder those things. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.